Hello everyone. In my last video you saw the disassembly of the RC car. And these are the front and rear hubs of this car. And a long time ago I was want to fix them, as you can know, to fix, uh, improve them a bit. So they are using uh, small and big bearings. Small bearing on the front. Uh, on the outside part of the hub and bigger bearing inside. Uh, these bearings are working well and the hub itself is working well. Uh, but uh, if you're using um, these kind of cars outside in uh, pretty dirty conditions, uh, the larger bearings work much better and uh, this size of the bearings is one of the best and they are living quite long time. So what I want to do, I want to have these bigger bearings outside as well. So I will need to cut a new place for the bearing in these hubs, in the front and in the rear. Uh, how I could do that? The base uh, on the rear hub I have, it's here, so I could just put it under the um, round table and just cut a new place for the bigger bearing. But with the front hub it's much more difficult because uh, the base for this front hub is somewhere inside here. Uh, so mounting of uh, this hub I think I will put a bearing inside and then probably some round piece and it should be high enough because the uh, we have this uh, plastic part here that are worn down uh, so it's much more difficult to uh, position it to cut this side and also as you can see, uh, the bearing is not in the middle of uh, the hub, so it's uh, moved a bit. Uh, it's made because of uh, setting up of the car, and uh, there is a hub with the uh, bearing on the middle, and there is a hub with the moved bearing. Um, this one is uh, with the moved. Uh, and if I will compress here the or put, put here the bigger bearing there will be not so much plastic left on the, the, this side so in this video I will update these hubs and I will assemble the car let's go now I'll show you how I'm mounting the hub to the round table. I'm using this measure. That's basically why I was need to have bigger space uh, between the uh, chart and the table. And that's why I made these inserts under the column of the uh, milling machine. But I have a possibility now to use a measure like this I'm starting from my rear hubs now it's aligned quite well in the middle of the round table We'll just put now a cutter instead of a tester and and we'll cut. The first part is done and I could use now the bigger bearings on the front side and on the rear side. Uh, 
it should be compressed quite well. And it will be much stronger setup than initial on the car with the smaller bearing. I'll continue with another one rear part and then I will show you how I'm mounting the front part that are much more difficult to mount. Look how finishing it looks. It's very well. Really, this small machine is made for the plastic and such materials like aluminium, soft aluminium, plastic, brass. It's a mountain of the front hubs. So, bearings, parallels. I'm using a shaft inside the bearings. It's eight millimeter shaft, piece of shaft. And I'm using a bearing as a base because this one plastic um, is not accurate enough to use it as a base. So what I have, I have like a two thousands of play. Uh, it's more than enough for the such a part because when I'm mounting it, it's already changing their dimension. Uh, this plastic is uh, very soft. And now cutting absolutely in the same way as was with the rear hubs. Now when all hubs are ready to go, it's time to assemble everything together. I will start from the front and rear gearboxes. So it's a base for the rear and base for the front. Gearboxes, arms, hubs, all the transmission parts. Let's go. These real hubs are identical, so I could use any one on the each side. Also, I'm mounting the screw on front and uh, not on the rear. But the initial manual says that I need to mount it opposite. But if you will mount it opposite, as by manual, uh, then very likely that you will get a lot of dust uh, on the side of the nut and uh, it will just not... Yeah, you will get a problem when you will need to unscrew this nut. So my decision is to mount a, a screw on front and not on the rear. I'll show you one more trick. If you want to make your divs dust protected, that no dust comes inside, never, never ever, doesn't matter where you drive and how you drive, you just need to apply a grease in one place, which you never found in, in any of the manual. So, what I'm doing, I'm getting the same grease that I'm using for uh, the bearings. And I'm applying this grease over the gearbox, so on these places. and also where the bearings is 
located. Now the dust will try to come inside, the grease will stop it from coming into the gearbox. Also I'm applying the grease on the other side. Actually I can do it only on one side, only on the outer and under the bearings on the inner side, on the inner part. There shouldn't be a very lot of grease, but just a bit like this. And gearbox will be completely dust protected. The rear part is done, and now I'm assembling the front. the time to mount everything to the body. I will start from this side guard. The next part I will mount is the gear differential with the brakes. Next will be a steering rail. And here I will need these last four small bearings. Now everything on the body is mounted, that I could mount at the moment. <coughs> and I need to mount gearboxes together with the arms. But before that I need to grease the gears. So for them I will use uh, the same cuprum grease that I used before. And we'll regrease them now. Usually it's enough to have like three, four dots of the grease over the gear and everything will be fine. After a few of moments of the gear, everything will be already with the grease, as you can see. Okay, maybe. Here a bit more. Okay, it's more than enough. And the same I'm doing with the rear, not to forget. And of course, protesting of the dust, uh, from the dust. For that, I'm applying a grease, same as for bearings the bottom of the gearbox, the place that will be connected to the body of the car, or to the chassis, how to say it better, let it be to the body.
I'm applying Grizzes uh, to at the very late point of building of the car when I'm actually mounting already gearboxes to the car, not to have everything on my table with the grease. So again, not very much, but to make sure that it's applied everywhere to the gearbox. And now mounting of the gearboxes. Almost the last parts of the car, the tank and shocks. Now, assembly of the electronics. Uh, I will use my Sano transmitter. I have these two Kyosha servers. Uh, turn on switch. And let's go. It will be fast. That's it with the electronical part. It's all the electronics of this car. And now just mounting this to the car itself. Mounting of electronics to the car. At the beginning I will mount the block itself. And just a few screws on the button. So, now I need to turn on the car and set a trimming settings of uh, servers into zero from the radio. I like how this servo arm is mounted, but uh, the brakes are pressed, so I need to depress them and here is the settings of the brakes, so with this, with rotation of these arms. Okay, now I want to have the wheels rotated a bit, a bit more on the right. So I'm setting up it on the radio. So I think like this will be okay, but I will made the final setup um, at the end, when everything will be assembled and when the wheels will be on the car as well. Uh, also end points. I need to set them up, not to kill the servos. So it will be enough for this servo. End points means that uh, at each point Server needs to stop. So, <laughs> that's it for this video. Next video will be complete about the engine and mounting it to the car, and maybe even first run of this car on the street. And first start of the engine after rebuilding. Not as much left, so only the engine. Um, I could of course mount completely brand new engine here and it will just work and that's it. But uh, I would like to show you how I will rebuild the engine from scratch. 
If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and you will see a lot of new stuff soon.